Hey there. Hey, everyone. You are live with Rock Life with Zion. Thank you for being a part of this. I'm so excited. I wanted to thank everyone that came out for the launch a couple weeks ago on September 3rd. It went wonderful. It went excellent. So I want you guys to know that today with Rock Life, what I'm doing is going to be talking about the title, I Am Free. And I will have some great audience here. And um, I would definitely like you to tune in. Now, I was so excited that I was able to talk to Tracy Randall, which have this song called um, Free. It's called Be Free. So I want you to hear a little bit of it. Um, it's totally, totally a blessing and a part of what um, I'll be doing on I Am Free. All right, so check this out. And I'm so thankful for Tracy allowing me to grace my show with this song. But check out the words. So is there anything out there that you want to be free from? I mean, there's so many things that people are going through right now. Uh, thank you for joining me, Jean. Good to see you, Leonard. Thanks for joining in. But this show, for several weeks, I'm going to be talking about being free. I am free. And I want to tell you my story about why I'm free and what it takes to be free, to, to be loose from everything that is a heavy weight on you. You know, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a relationship, whether it is overcoming something in your life. You know, we have to become free. We have to just uphold our purpose. I call it, I jumped. And I don't know, I'd like to know how many of you guys checked out um, my I jumped. Uh, when I spoke about, I just uploaded my purpose. Coming out of the system. All the things that are oppressing and depressing. You know, a lot of things are happening out, out there. So I thank you, Travis, for coming in. Don, glad you joined me. Um, I would definitely like you guys to check now. We got a lot of things going on here at Rock Life. The things that we're going to be talking about today, like I'm saying, is I am free. And thanks again, Tracy Rando. He will be joining us hopefully in the next week or so to come on and talk about his song and what he wants to be free from and what God has freed him from. All right. Um, I'd like to start off today. I do have a special guest that's going to be coming in, and we're going to be having a discussion about what she's free from. Um, anyone that has a story, a great story, that wants to talk about what they are free from, I would love you to inbox me because this is the time that we need to be ready. This is the time that we need to free ourselves from things that are not what we need to have in our lives, free ourselves from negativity, free ourselves from being broken, free ourselves from things that are weighing us down, oppressing us, depressing us. It is time to be free. So normally I don't wear a hat, but when I'm reading the word, those things I like to cover myself. So stay with me for a minute, and I'm going to tell you what's the one key thing that we need in our lives to be free. This is what keeps us free. If you go to, with me to Galatians, Galatians 5, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Christ has made 
us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay, so it's telling us that Christ has made us free. So if you have anything that's weighing you down, anything that's hurting you, suppressing you, that is not what we and Christ had for our lives. And therefore, he said, Behold, I Paul say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. And it said, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. So just because you circumcised, remember in the Old Testament, if you were circumcised and so forth, it just meant that that you were um, the law, you was clean, you you was not under the law, you were saved, so to speak, the way we see it today. But if you were uncircumcised, it was of sin. But Christ in sin, that is of no profit right now. And he said, Christ has become of no effect unto you, um, whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. So basically, a lot of people are just doing what you say, said I'm uncircumcised or I I go to church or I do this, you know, I'm living a certain kind of lifestyle um, because God knows I love him. But if you're not circumcised in your spirit, meaning that you can go to church, you can be on the board, you can do a position, but if you're not circumcised in your heart, if you're not living in the spirit of love, living of the spirit of obedience, then that profits nothing. Then he goes on to say, for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now this right here is what makes we make us free. Righteousness by faith. For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And this is the only thing, the only thing through the Christ and the love of Christ is the righteousness of faith. And righteousness of faith is righteousness itself is living a life of obedience, doing righteous things by faith. So it's a righteous work by your faith. It's not just going to church. It's not just saying I love God. It's not just saying he knows my heart. It's actually executing the deeds of the Christ in you. And this alone which will make us free. When we start being obedient to God, he will free us from all these things that are weighing us down. And what are those things? Whether it be in your life, you're going through these things because God is trying to show, not try, he is showing you something. Whether you pay attention to it or not is up to you. But if you want to be free from sickness, okay, he said by his stripes, Christ said, we are healed. So therefore, sickness is not of God. If you're in a relationship that you're not happy with, okay, how do you be free? Not to say you're leaving your relationship, but free from feeling like you're being attacked or someone's envy of you or someone's not treating you the way that you need to be treated. It's not about how they treat you, but it's really about how you treat them. Even if they don't treat you the way that God sees and have you to treat them, long as you're doing your part, God will make you free and free indeed. So all of us want to make sure that we get that freedom in our lives. And this whole thing that I'm talking about, thank you for joining us, Karoma. Um, thank you for joining us, Dusty, Bettina. Um, this whole subject where I'm going to be talking about is testimonies with people who have become free, what it takes to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to actually come into these places. Now, today I have, as you guys can see, my beautiful sister, Shanae Holmes, and she's going to come in and we're going to talk a little bit about her, what she's free from. What is she free from? And, and you know, we have to take every segment of our lives because we can get free from one thing and we can be a conqueror, but then over here we got something next to go to. It's just like school. It's like, okay, we finished the first grade. We already know this right here, but now I got to work on this part. And the first thing of being free is understanding what you need to be free from. It's not anything outside yourself. So, you know, you can't be like, well, I need to be free from my wife or I need to be free from... Uh, my aunt and this and that, maybe that can be true, but first you need to go inside of you to see what is what 
working in you that needs to be transformed to be in a place where you can walk by righteous faith. We want to walk by righteous faith. So we're going to have Shanae, my beautiful sister, come up, and we're going to talk about what she is free from. And if you guys have any questions, definitely come in, ask questions. We would love for to hear what your feedback is and what we're doing here. Come on, Shanae. Thank you. So we got Shanae here, and Shanae, awesome. Okay, so tell me about um, your your story about I am free. There she is. Let me turn it in just a little bit. There we go. All right. So tell me a little bit about you. Tell me about yourself and then you can tell me your story actually about how you're free from. Well, um, a little bit about me. I'm just, uh, I'd say that I'm regular, but who's regular? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I came from a middle class family and an Air Force grad. I've traveled. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a lot of adventure, a lot of hardship, uh, but I turned it into triumph. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent many years, about 29, 30 years, people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I eventually broke free from, all praises to the most high. Mm -hmm. okay. So people pleasing, people pleasing. So how many out there you guys know about people pleasing? I think all of us come to a place where we always did something that we didn't want to do for someone else, right? Mm -hmm. So when you realize that was something really important that you needed to overcome. Go ahead. Oh, right now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, after years of my life going in, in so many different directions, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I just dug really deep into the scriptures and found that in pleasing people, you're not pleasing the most high God. You're not you're not walking in your purpose when you're doing those things. And I had to put the pieces together. In fact, God had to put the pieces together for me. It's not something I could do for myself. I had to really press into him so that he could deliver me from people pleasing. That's awesome. Yeah, when, when you think about that, and, and bear with us as far as, hi, Lisa. Um, bear with us here um, on this camera thing because the camera people just look here, so I'm trying to do the best I can here, um, is we want to make sure that any relationship that you make, because everything in life is about relationship, right? right? Whether it's with your parents, whether it's with your husband, friends, because it doesn't matter, work, employees, um, you always want to put your relationship with God first. Anything, everything in your life should be surrounded about pleasing God. We want to please God first. So when you please God, that's why the scripture says to first love God, okay? The first commandment, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now, when we have that relationship and that intimacy with God, what does he say next? Love your neighbors as you love yourself. A lot of us have those two backwards. Would you agree? I agree. We start off with loving our neighbor, Sometimes we don't even love ourselves. We try to start off loving our neighbor because we want to be loved. So we try to fill our voids by trying to love someone else, but we're totally out of order. So it won't work. It will never work that way. So we have to put that first. So is there a particular, um, let's say, example or something that you really experienced that really, that day it pierced you in your heart? that you know what, you know, the tears come, you know, because God works in a contrite spirit. Oh, yes. You know? <laughs> yes, I was actually in nursing school. I was in Texas. I was all by myself, but I made the decision to move to Texas based on what someone else wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. So I get down there. I'm in school. I wasn't able to pay my tuition. I lost my job. I had had it. I, I cried out. I was like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I literally took my bills, threw them in the air, and said, I can't do this. Um, 
I was about to get evicted while well, they were they were willing to work with me. But I made so many decisions. My decision to be there, my decision to, to work a certain job, just based on what other people wanted me to do. And I literally had to give it to the most high, surrender mm -hmm. everything to him and literally do what the scriptures say mm -hmm. and focus on him and seek him first so that all things would be added. And they were. Oh, that's awesome. They absolutely were. Okay, so you went from doing what someone else says, mm -hmm. and then you went down there, you lost everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then, and that's what happens. That's what brings us to the inside. Right. You know, mm -hmm. have that conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And then, then you were blessed because now you realize, you know what, I'm not going to let anyone dictate to me my life right. and my direction. Absolutely. And then God added a lot back to you. He did. Um, he had my rent paid. It was just all unexpected at the last minute, and and things just happened. They were just doors were opening. As soon as I surrendered everything to him, I got not one but two job offers. Mm -hmm. Everything was just it was running smooth after that. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> I fell back into old habits. And because of someone that I cared about in my family, I made the decision to move. And he didn't tell me to move. And I did. So I had to struggle a little bit as a result of that decision. But then I thought back to the lesson I learned when I was in Texas, and it brought it full circle. So now I'm not making the same mistakes right. that I made before. See, and, and that's perfect because that's like all of us. We'll get an answer from God. Thanks for joining us, Beretta. Uh, we'll get an answer from God. We'll learn a lesson and we'll be like, I got it, I got it. Because you notice all the time we'll, we'll cry. We'll cry out to Father. Oh, Father, help us. And, you know, we got it now. You know, and he's like, you got it? Trust me. He'll be like, you got it? He's like, yeah, I got it, I got it. He's like, okay, and then you be walking and just feel like a sucker punch just went from the left and then see it. You be like, whoa, wait a minute, and you find yourself doing the same thing again, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you get that same pain. But the beautiful thing about children of God, even though we go through that of like, disobedience and mm -hmm. getting correction, because God said, I chastise those who I love, is that we recognize His voice. Yes, we you do. know. And then we like we don't want that pain because I, I say pain is our teacher because mm -hmm. it's really there to say hey you know what we don't like this right. I don't like this feeling right now you right. know what I'm saying so what do I do about it if I don't like it well pain is not there to conquer you pain is there for you to conquer it so that you can have conversations with it and it can show you boundaries it can show you the direction what God wants to lead you and direct you in okay so once you learn you know a couple times because we don't get it always on the first time right. um how do you say that it came to a point where you said you know what i'm free from this and, and, and something rose up in you to really be free and got in the liberty of saying you know what i don't i don't have to please anyone because if i'm pleasing god if I'm truly pleasing God, mm -hmm. those who know God and love God and the part of God are going to be pleased automatically. That's true. Right? So tell me that experience when you was like, I'm, you've become it now. I've become the freedom of um, not pleasing people, but just pleasing God. I, I don't want to be cliche and <laughs> say that it was like, my 30s you know <laughs> that, that, but um i am um, <laughs> right i just he gave he did give me wisdom mm -hmm. at, at a certain point after all of that after all of that crying out that i did after all that seeking him that i did um lots of prayer lots of fasting it seemed to have appeared overnight and out of nowhere mm -hmm. but it was a peace that really surpassed mm -hmm. all understanding literally and mm -hmm. I, I literally woke up and it was, it was just such a calm oh. in my spirit and in my soul. And I could hear him clearly. And everything was just, it, 
it's a feeling I can't even describe mm -hmm. when you're walking with him and you know he's with you and you can hear everything he's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. And and as, as long as you're not focused on what other people want and you're in his will, you can hear him clearly. And, and that's when I knew I was like, this is it. Like I can hear him clearly without all of the background noise. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, I love that. It was beautiful. I love that. And you guys all know when, when the noise comes, the distractions come, you know, those are the things that's, that's what the enemy does. He, he, he distracts you or he'll take what God said and, and add to it. I call it the curveball. you know, how if God says to you, I want you to take two steps and say, like, he didn't say two steps. He said, if you take two steps, we know how he said to Eve, if you take two steps, that this is going to happen. But you should take the third step because if you take the third step, that's really what you need to do because guess what? This is what you're really going to be missing. And you, and you talk yourself into doing something outside of doing exactly what God told you to do. So I, I really love the point that, you know, freedom, and, and you notice when she said she became free, yes. is when she surrendered. You have to surrender. You have to surrender to the most high. You know, I, I was so excited to interview my sister because when she told me the story, you know, about being free, about pleasing people, I knew this was something universal. Because whether you're trying to please someone on your job, um, if you're trying to please someone in your home, and you get that feeling inside like you know that you're coming against what you really want to do, then you know what? That's a, a sign of saying, you know what? Free yourself. Surrender. You Please God. You need to build your relationship with God. I remember when I felt like I was pleased. I wanted to please everybody. You know what I mean? It's like I wanted to do what you do. Do, and I was just pleased out. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I was like, I can't do it no more, but I kept doing it, you know, until I realized in pleasing others, there still was voice. Right. I wasn't happy, you know, and I wasn't getting back what I was putting out. And even though I wasn't looking for something back, I, you think that's how it worked. I give you some water, you give me some mm -hmm. too. And then you realize you give somebody some water and you don't even see the glass no more. It's like, right. what happened? So for your life, looking at the people that you please, what did you find out in your journey um, was the outcome of it? I was on a wheel, mm -hmm. and I was constantly spinning. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting anywhere. And every decision I made left me stagnant spiritually mm -hmm. and, and, and broken because – no matter what you do, you'll never receive honor from men. Christ didn't receive honor from men, you know? So we can only expect the same. And so that will, and I was exhausted and so hurt and so broken and seeking approval. If I just do what they say, they'll treat me well. They'll love me. Ooh, I love that. And that's, that's mm. not usually the case. The more you do, mm -hmm. the more they use, the more they do. And, the more they want. And they'll just, you know, it's like a towel. You'll just be, mm. <laughs> just, you're spent. They're wringing you and wringing you and wringing you out. And then you're spent and falling apart and just in this will. And it's just a cycle that just goes on and on and on. Right. And just listening to you, I could see. Um, that it's a void. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a void that we have, that we want to be loved. We were created mm -hmm. to be loved. So what happens is we feel if we, we love people or give to them, we're going to get that void filled. And like she said, you just start spinning and spinning, mm -hmm. and you're just looking, and God's just waiting. <laughs> He's like, you'll be here soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like when are you going to choose me? Right. <laughs> like, I'm here for you. Ooh. And he's t in an audible voice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nobody loves me. I'm <laughs> like this. And he said, daughter, I love you. Mm -hmm. And he told me three times. Because the first time I was like, I know. But I want somebody. I love you, daughter. Yeah. Daughter, I love you. And I was like. Mm, I'm sorry, like, 
Like your love is enough. Like your your grace and your love is sufficient for me, literally. Ooh, girl, mm -hmm. I got the cheese. <laughs> yes, let me tell you about that. Okay, I love it. I love it. I love it because that's when God says, "I am your first love." He is the first love in our life. There's no one else. He said, if you put your mother before me, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, you are not worthy of the kingdom of God. You have to put your life in order. If you want to be free, you think you're going through these things because it's just life. It is not just life. It is these things happening to you because you don't walk by the righteousness of faith. That means that you have to trust God. You have to trust God. Now, how can you trust him? If you do not believe in him, if you don't have intimacy with him, if you're putting everything before him. So now that these relationships that you have, and now you have this peace, and now, and, and you have to become it now. Right. You know, you have to become that. You don't, you don't have to like me. I'm going to tell you, I wanted everybody to like me in school and in, in kindergarten. <laughs> I was giving my candy away. Yeah. I was just like, I was the only child raised that way. So it's like, what can I give, you know? And they was taking it too. Well, give me your lunch money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I just wanted all that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just, I, I desire to have that love. And I we think love is when someone cares for us and talk to us and be our friend, right. you know, and, and we're just giving to them. And we, we have to learn the hard way. We all learn from the outside going in. You understand? Right. So tell me your experience of, because we know, like I said, and, and my thing is showing everyone how we should start from the inside and go out. But of course, our lives has been starting off with the outside, you know, dealing mm -hmm. with Okay, you see from the outside how people treat each other. And I see, you know, like you wanted somebody to like you, so you did things for them because you seen them like somebody else. And you wanted to be someone loved or someone's favorite. Mm -hmm. Or you wanted to see yourself have a relationship like them phony ones they have on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like the soap operas that yeah. you, know, you watch as a kid. And yeah. you're like, it didn't work like that. And I, right. I, you know, I'm like, I got all that said, that soap opera was lying to me right. all the time because right. I was just like, oh man, I just want him to love me like that. Oh, I go on right. a horse and just look at me and it's like, well, where's your horse? Right. You know, oh, you got a car, but you know what I'm saying? Where's that love consistently? Right. You know, I didn't even understand the drama. Did you mm -hmm. under understand the drama? <laughs> no. I didn't even understand the drama and the soap operas. All the yeah. part I knew was, I, you know, the married and all they were doing. Right. You know, I was just a little probably, what, 100 years ago. <laughs> I had no idea. But tell us how it worked for you. You know, how you learned how to look from the outside. Because now you're totally inside. Right. Okay. And I think it's you, it's probably not wisdom, just you trying to understand, mm -hmm. looking on the outside and then going inside, crying, and then coming back out. Right. So tell us your journey of how, you know, you're now on the inside and you're dealing with the intimacy or the inner journey and dealing with how to, um, to transform your, out, your outer journey. Well, um... Putting, putting God first was the best thing I could have ever done mm -hmm. because, like I said, that peace and that love is the best feeling you could ever have. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed the change when, you know, I told the people that I love most no the first time. Mm -hmm. And it was like a switch went off. And the way they reacted and the way they responded, it, it normally I, I would be easily manipulated by that. And I just, I wasn't moved by it. It's like, I love you. Call me when you're over it. You know, oh, like, I'll, know. I'll keep you in prayer. Right. You know, and it's, it's, not a, it's not even in a disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, I love my parents, my grandparents, people like that. But sometimes you have to say no. Yes. You have to say no, especially if it interferes with the will of God. Mm -hmm. And so it started coming outward in no. Mm -hmm. and being comfortable with no, no matter what the consequence was. And people started getting upset. Like, mm -hmm. who, who is this new person that I can't get to do whatever I want anymore? Mm -hmm. No, this is what you're supposed to do. And I started having relationships on my terms. 
and relationships based on on who the father wanted in my life. And then I started praying about those relationships. Who do you want in my life? Please remove anyone who is not for me. Oh yes. No matter who it is. Right. And so unfortunately, people started dropping like flies as far as like off the friendship boat, off the family boat. People certain people didn't want anything to do with me. But you also have to count the costs of this walk. And it happens. And that's why you can't love anyone more than him. Because mm -hmm. he will always be there for you. Ooh, tell me about And he'll it. never break your heart. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, if I have to choose between people mm -hmm. and him, he wins every time. Go ahead, girl. Give me the <laughs> That's right. I'll talk yeah. about that. My father wins all the time. Every time. All the time. Um, Thomas, thank you for joining in. You know, it's so awesome because like sis is saying here is that when you have that relationship with God, his, he will wax you strong in his spirit. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to, you'll know now how to say no, mm -hmm. where you used to say yes. And it's, it's a knowing love. I mean, just know, you know, and I think we were domesticated as children to say no at the right time. And yes, at the, I mean, no at the wrong time. And yes, at the wrong time. Cause two, you know, like when we ask God for blessings, for example, oh God, can you bless me? I need you know, to, to take care of this situation. And he'll bring someone and say, oh, let me go ahead. I got something for you. Let me take you. Like, oh, that's okay. What? You know, mm -hmm. we got to learn how to say, learn the timings of everything. Yes. You know, that even he said there's a time mm -hmm. for this and it's a time for that. So basically we really want to make sure that we get our timing right, but it all stems from what? What makes us free is righteous faith. What is righteous faith? Faith that has works of righteousness, mm -hmm. okay? We're going to work it, meaning that your deeds, your deeds, and, and you have the faith in God and you putting him first. You're not feeling like man is the reason for the season. We find ourselves trusting in the government. We're t trusting in the education system. We're trusting in uh, these Fortune 500 companies. We're trusting in, in, in the phones. We're trusting in everything but God. We've allowed these things to take the place of God. And when you let that happen, when things fail, trust me, when the government takes away what it takes away, then you're discombobulated. You have no idea what to do. When you lose that job and you don't have no money, you're discombobulated. You don't know what to do. Because God is saying, hey, first seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added. So we have to learn how to put God first. This is the way we are free. Now, God can put, God will allow, say you have a sickness, you're being attacked and you, you need healing in your body. Let me tell you, these things, these elements, um, are not of God. They're just simply not of God, okay? And what do we have to do? We really have to say, okay, what is it in me that I need to be free from? You know, because Christ, he went along, he, he even healed many. Now, some have illnesses for the glory of God, meaning that his glory is going to be actually seen through that situation. Say, for instance, um, the young um, guy in the Bible who actually had a sickness and he said well if he had this sickness only because of a time because christ wanted to heal him in front of many people you see what i mean so really you would know okay what do i need to do to clean up my life what do i need to be free from my illness what do i need to be free from negativity what is it in me because we're always looking at everybody else you know, just like when you went through your situation, mm -hmm. you know, you were looking at everybody else until it took time to go through heck and hurt to say, wow, let me look at me. Mm -hmm. Then you start because I am important. You mm -hmm. know, I, I feel in a void. I'm feeling lost. I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling like I'm being misused and abused. You know, what's really on, going on around here? Right. OK. And so when you realize that. And you went in there and you took the most important thing, which is you put God into that void. Oh my gosh. Now, no, when you put God into that void, like you said, and then you should start telling people you're in love. Right. And people don't like that, right? They don't. 
they don't like that. They think, oh, you tell me what's wrong with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But that's good because now tell me about when that happened and what was the blessing of understanding those who God has for your life and those he don't have, you know, will remove from your life. Well, there's, there's always people that are sent either from him or from the enemy. There's all kinds of distractions and things mm -hmm. that occur. So when I got that understanding, okay, well, maybe I'm praying for the wrong thing. I'm focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And he started manifesting so many positive things for me, you know, um, with all of my prayers. You know, and like you were talking about illness, just to piggyback off of that real quick, I don't mean to get off topic. But for example, he gives you peace and he gives you power. So no one has to lay hands on you. Get up and rebuke the sickness and move on. Yes. Because if you have that faith, then that's all you need, faith in him. And he'll carry you through all of it. Um, but to digress and go back to the people that I was dealing with, some of those people I still have to deal with because they're relatives. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and um, I love them. Mm -hmm. And they finally Start respect. started respecting it and understanding it. Because I just kept bringing the scriptures to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's how you combat the <laughs> right, enemy right. with the word. Mm -hmm. And then they back off. Oh, you know, they don't want that. So, you know, they weren't ready. Like, I wasn't ready for that word, you know, for this Bible be down. Okay. But, uh, so, They're like, that's not right. Right. Okay, I got you. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, you just, you bring, you know, you, you bring it to them with love and scriptures. Yes. And, and eventually, if they love you, if they really, truly love you and they're for you, then they'll understand. And if they're just out for themselves, then they'll disappear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, the most high just started removing people left and right. I mean, they were just, they were getting so angry and just moving on out of my life so quick. I was like, well, you know, praise the most high. You know, like it, it hurts to lose friends of 15 years, but I could not see what he saw. Mm -hmm. And what he saw was, you know, that they were detrimental to my life, my health, mm -hmm. everything. So they were they were removed, and he'll do it. Uh, and, and that's key, what she said. What's so awesome about that? And thank you, Bridget, for um, coming in, joining us. Um, what's so awesome is that um, the key thing she's saying, like, here is when you are in the will of God, when you are doing the things that God has called you to do and start obey obeying him, mm -hmm. obeying him, there's things that's going to come out of your life and come in. You understand? And that's necessary. See, because when you're not in the laws or doing obedience to God, now you're dealing with things that you don't, wouldn't have to worry with. You understand? But because of you out of order, mm -hmm. now you're dealing with these things and it's elements in your life that's there to depress you mm -hmm. and suppress you. Thank you, Crystal, for coming in. Um, I just want you to know, the first thing I love, like I said, when you telling people, hey, you know what? It's okay if I lose you. Now, cutting off is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. so, so I want you to see the process here. The process here is that, okay, now I'm in with the Father. Okay, I'm not, I'm not about pleasing people no more. I'm not about pleasing you without the Father. Let's put it like that. Right. If I'm going to please you, it's going to be in the rim of the Father. Mm -hmm. so, so now you got two things. Like I say this is the Father and this is the world. Okay. Now the world is limited. So why are you in this realm of the world? Okay. When it's limited, it can't take you and fulfill you. But when you in God, it circumference everything in the world itself. So you are doing yourself a disservice by trying to get everything you can out of the world. Like, like for instance, the things that we believe we need, oh, I need my bills paid. Oh, I got to take my child to school. Oh, like look at relationships. You know, we're looking at everything with the outer man, with our eyes on the outside, instead of looking in the eyes of God and keeping our eyes single to God and realize all the answers is in there. And the laws that he set for you are not grievance, meaning that they are there to keep you so that you can be free. He made it for you to be free. But you're not free because you're bounded by the world. You're bounded 
by your flesh and doing those things that oppose the law of God. So notice when she said that once she put herself out from being a pleaser, okay, pleasing everybody but herself, then she came into a relationship with God. It was her and God, sub together, okay? Then he strengthened her, and then he showed her love. But then when God shows you love, it starts oozing out of you. It's just oozing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like why are yeah. you so happy all the time? What's right. up? It's like, where? Right. And then you go somewhere and somebody be, you know, a little up, you know, upset. You be like, goodness, okay, let me press through this and give you some love. Let me lift you up. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is the order. This is when order started coming in her life is when she started building that relationship with God. She said, I'm not a people pleaser. And then she starts setting standards according to the laws of God. Mm -hmm. And then she start learning that things are going to start being cut off. Right. Okay. Um, and you know what? What the Bible said, if it offends you, cut it off. Cut it off. <laughs> cut it off. Yeah. It might not feel good, but mm -hmm. chop, chop. You got to go. Okay, right? The peace that you gain is so much better Ooh, than girl, the stress that yes. you maintain in yes. a relationship that is out of his will. Girl, talk about it. Girl, oh. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. So let me tell you, like she said, when you cut it off, mm -hmm. it seemed like it hurts because it's strong ties. It's strong holds you have. You know, relationships are like strong holds. You know, and it's like, you know, you can cry, but let me tell you, this is the fire. The fire is, I love God more than anything. Right. And if it hurt, it's just like this. It can hurt and keep hurting. But if, if it means me putting it before God, let it hurt into a heel. Right. <laughs> I agree. Let it hurt I into agree. a heel. Right? Right. So look at the process. So now she went through having to cut all these people off. Mm -hmm. You know, these people are being cut off in love. So guess what? When you start putting yourself in a place with God, you know, when you're putting your place in, with God, people are going to start falling off mm -hmm. that need to fall off because they're not really uh, in the spiritual place that you are and want to be. And it's not that you're saying you got to go. Right. They're just going to flee anyway. The light, <laughs> I mean, the light um, is, you know, offensive to the darkness. So they'll mm -hmm. scatter. Like girl, yeah, yeah, that's that girl. Like, yeah. well, you don't need no spray, no red, nothing. No, nothing. All you need is the most hot. So if you want to get away, get rid of the blood. <laughs> you know, just get the most hot because they will go. You know, and and it's funny because I say in in relationships because we're gonna talk about relationships. I'll have some guests on Thursday and I'll do some announcements and so forth as well. Um, I just want you guys to know that it's going to be a powerful thing about relationships and it's also being free, free in the midst of a relationship, because what makes you free is not what's going on on the outside of you. Right. What makes you free is what's going on on the inside, Exactly. you know, exactly. on the inside. So that inner journey. So what made my sister free on the inside was her relationship with God. Absolutely. Her relationship with God. Now, tell me um, about a particular maybe relationship that you found, because we all have that close, you know, relationship mm -hmm. that it was difficult, you know, and you and you find yourself maybe <laughs> sometimes feeling like you're borderline. Yeah. Because I, I I can assure you, even though you have conquered that, right, right it's still parts of you that feel like. Am I still conquered? Because really, I don't want to do what you asked me to do today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, right. um, when you find that balance, where you find that balance at? Oh, man. I, and I, I hate to keep being repetitive, but you, mm -hmm. you have to pray. Mm -hmm. You have to seek him in all things. And I, and I believe we actually spoke about a relationship that I had. It was a friendship that I had. And, and it wasn't a people-pleasing kind of a friendship. But I noticed that I felt like I needed this person in my life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't not, you know, I couldn't live without them. And that's when I knew that I was out of order. Yeah. Because no one should be that important to you. That that, that relationship means the most to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, I never want the most high to feel like he has to take the back seat. I never want God to feel like he's second place, mm -hmm. runner up to anybody. So I literally had to fast and pray 
to break that bond that I had with that person mm -hmm. to make it easy to walk away because they had to go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, is there anyone in your life right now that you feel that you need more than God? Because you're saying that you really need this person more than God if you feel that you cannot live without that person. Mm -hmm. There should not be not one person in your life that you don't feel, that you should feel, that you can't live without. You know why? Because everything is supposed to first go through loving God. Okay? And being liberated means that nothing bounds me. And the reason why I'm sharing this, I am free with you because I am free. I've come a place in my life that I am not bound by nothing. Everything that I have and I own do not belong to me. It belongs to my father. So if you think you're going to take something away from me, go right ahead. If you think you want to steal something from me, go right ahead. If you think you can try to hurt me, you go right ahead. Because I'm in free. I am free indeed in God in Christ, and there's nothing that I'm bound by. I came here with nothing, and I will leave here with nothing. So why should I be bound? You know, you got your bills over here, you got a house, you got a car, and what? Is that supposed to bound me? Do I supposed to lose my mind and worry because you want to try to take that? Or you think you can take that? Or you can, um, you know, like I remember a long time ago, I had a little story. I had bought some brand new furniture. You know, and, and back then I had my own daycare. And I remember one of the little kids took a little a knife, no, scissors, and cut my couch. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, help me, Father, help me. Father, Woo! let me tell you. Now, these are the things that I'm saying to you that you are tested, okay? Mm -hmm. What you going to do about it, you know? And that's the time, those hard times is when you talk to – to the situation with God. And, I, and, and I, I loved on that situation because God showed me right then and there, it don't matter. What, what, should I trip because, oh, you cut my couch? What am I do? You know what I'm saying? Or somebody hit my car, just like I remember I, I was driving this, this guy, you know, fell off his bike because he got mad because I pulled up a little bit and he fell off his bike trying to give me a finger going across the thing. And he fell off his bike and got mad at me. Well, I was looking at him like, see what God does? And, you know, you can't, you can't just go putting your finger up and treat people. You don't know who you're doing that to. You know what I'm saying? So he falls off the bike and starts getting up, throwing rocks in my car. Now, I could have just tripped out and got off the car. But I'm like, you know what? Is that, you know what? I just loved on him. This is the fire that we have to a consuming fire that we're not moved by what people do, mm -hmm. what people say. And God show me when you're there, you have arrived. You have arrived because we're so moved by these offenses. We always get offended. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. You definitely have to make sure that you're doing things in order. You want to make sure that you're putting God first. This is the only way you're going to find freedom in your life. So I want to take a quick break because I'm going to have some announcements come up that we're going to be doing and Shanae and I will um, come back. It's just like a commercial for right now. Uh, but I'm going to have um, Chiquita, which she's going to do our announcements and tell you what's going to be coming up for this week. If you have any questions, you know you can also um, call in on our call line. And uh, me and Shanae will be coming back right back to you um, in just one second. And Chiquita, if you can come over here and tell everybody what's, what we got going on right now. Now, if you have any questions, we're also on the conference line that you've seen um, right there. You can give us a call and ask any questions if you want. We will open the lines if that's the case. But if there's something that you need to be free from, just let me know. You know, email me. Um, inbox me, text me, we can pray together because it's the time to be ready. And to be ready means we have to be broken from bondages, bondages of being pleaser of man and start being pleasers of God. All right. Well, thank you. And I'll be right back. Come on, Chiquita. <laughs> Hey, 
And thank you for joining us, our Facebook family. Happy Sunday to everyone. My name is Chiquita. I help out here with Zion, our host. Thank you for joining us. We have something really exciting for you next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday on the 27th, singer, songwriter, actress, extraordinary, and, and she's also a legend in the R&B world. Karen White is going to be joining Zion this Wednesday, the 27th at 7 p.m. Please be able to join us as we welcome Karen White. She has a fantastic new movie out called Gale in the Storm. She serves as a co-writer, a producer, and she also acts. Karen White is now an actress. She acts in the movie Gale in the Storm. She's also going to be interviewed with Derek Muhammad. Derek Muhammad has an interesting story, too. He's a comedian. He stars with Karen White in the movie Gale in the Storm, and he also is a co-writer of the movie. So Gale in the Storm, join us this Wednesday, 7 p.m. with Zion interviewing Karen White and Derek Muhammad. The next day, it's equally interesting at 7 p.m. when you join us, Mashed Potatoes. It's a funny name, but it's a serious topic. It's about relationships, and Zion is going to walk you through past, current, and future relationships, and she'll take your questions as well. And the topic, I don't know if I can say this, but I'll try. Who's in my bed? I'm going to leave that to Zion. <laughs> and also, we're going to have special guests again next Sunday. Next Sunday, you can join us again at 2 p.m. with Zion. I want you to know that this is brought to you by Rock Life with Zion and Charging Station Network. So those are both your sponsors. We, again, love and welcome our Facebook family. Mm -hmm. Happy Sunday. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to turn it right back over to Zion. Happy Sunday, Facebook family. We'll see you. Wednesday, 7 p.m. with Karen White and Zion. Okay, good. Are, are you on? Um, I'm on okay. All right, all right. Thank you. I guess I hope you guys got those announcements and so forth. Um, also, Beretta. Yeah. Okay. Also, I have Beretta here with us um, on the teleconference line, and I want her. We also have some more shows that we're coming up in October that I want you guys to be prepared to know about. Beretta, if you can go ahead and, and let them know about that. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everybody. This is an awesome, awesome show. I am free today, rocking live with Zion on this evening. We thank God for you. Uh, the Lord has really been blessing. And uh, I just want to say I uh, I thank God for the testimony of uh, Sister Holmes, I think it is. Yes. Okay. Am I right? That's correct. Amen. Mm -hmm. We thank God for you and you be free and everything and uh, share your testimony on this evening. It's a great Sunday evening. Uh, yeah, Charter Station Radio is... Uh, Excited about the upcoming shows. We have a new lineup that's coming for the Charger Station Radio in October. We will be filling it with uh, our radio station, our lineup with new music and artists and guests and new shows. So one of our shows that are be airing with new uh, series is All Things Possible, which I, myself, Beretta, is the host of it. And um, we're just excited about all the things that are going to go forth and the testimonies and the ministry for all things possible teleconference series and radio show uh, where we are interceding for God's greatness. And also we do have a new show that's coming, uh, uh, Let's Talk Grace. It's awesome, awesome, awesome show. I listened in on the first interview for her show. And she's got some great, great people and uh, people of God that's going to come and share their testimony, share their life experience, share how God uh, blessed them. And she also have a segment of the show that's called uh, Your Grace Moment. And just share uh, that grace moment that, you know, kind of like an aha. Uh-oh. Hi. 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 Are you there? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, yes. And uh, I was saying that we're having, I don't know if you heard, Let's Talk Grace show is coming. Yes, yes, we did have. Yes, we okay. did. Yeah, okay. So, 
Yeah, and uh, also a continued series show that is also on the uh, Charger Station Radio Network. It's The Breakdown, and that is uh, hosted by Isaac Whitaker and Crystal Cross. They're the co-hosts of that show where they interview and uh, keep up with the latest artists and information and everything that's going on there. Uh, we're just excited about it, and we just love it. Rockin' Life with Zion is part of Charger Station Radio Network. It's everything, life is just moving right along, and it's just great. And we pray many blessings, and uh, I'm enjoying the show today. And it's really been a blessed to be, blessing to me. So we thank God for you. Thank you. Thank my beautiful yeah. sister Beretta. We just, the sister love, the sisterhood. We all stick together and we love on each other. And I am so grateful. Thank you for those announcements. Um, so, and thank you guys for joining us. Oh, hi, Robert. How are you? Hi, Crystal Renee, um, Kim, um, Christopher, James. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for joining in. What we're talking about is I am free. I'm here with the lovely and beautiful royal sister, Shanae, um, Shanae Holmes, and she's talking about, we're here talking about I am free, and we're talking about how the process goes on being free in your life, and, and this is free from all things, and, and mainly free from sin, free from um, depression, oppression, hatred, bitterness, envy, um, being alone, feeling alone. All these things, God said that we are of children of liberty. And that just means that if we're in that righteous faith, meaning that that righteous work, when you do a righteous work, which is obey God, the laws of God, putting God first, making him your first love. See, as you see how we started out with men pleasing, that's a big topic. And that's when my sister told me that, I'm like, you gotta come and talk about this because this is the main thing we need to be free from. We gotta stop pleasing everybody and everything, even yourself. You know, you know, you give God the crumbs from the table. You know, you don't even have time to pray. You're like, well, I gotta work, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. You're doing everything to please your bills, <laughs> to please your household, your wife, your children, or vice versa, anything, but you're not pleasing God. And only way you're going to be free, meaning where's what's, what's in freedom? Health, strength, prosperity, eternal life. Everything is in God. So to be free indeed and to be liberated is to be liberated in Christ. To be liberated as Christ is to be as he is. And so we have to go now. It's time that you go into your inner journey, mm -hmm. get your relationship with the Most High, because God said, when you love me, the only way, is the only way, one way to love God, to show God you love him, is through obedience. And so when he told you about the first commandment, to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, this is what I am free is all about. This is what makes man free, right? Right. So beautiful Shanae, she's talked to us and took, took us through the process. Now, I just want you to reiterate, you know, briefly, you know, for everybody, now that we're closing up, the, the process. Um, the process is basically to first realize you know when you're in a situation that's out of your control and you know your life you have to acknowledge that you have a problem mm -hmm. you know that's the first step and then of course you have to reach out to the father you have to seek a relationship with him start putting him first allow him to come in and love you and fill the void that you're feeling by pleasing other people and and being stagnant spiritually and even physically a lot of times. And um, just allow him to do the inner work to the outer work. Take control of the relationships that you have with these people. Um, pray mm -hmm. without ceasing. And just continue to focus on him and allow him to manifest peace in your life and freedom in your life. Oh, wow. She did that so gratefully and so wonderfully and so perfectly, right? 
Um, and when she said that, you know, to be wrapping up here is it reminds me of um, Adam and Eve in the garden. And Adam and Eve in the garden, what they did was hit themselves. And I want you guys to know is that when you do not take accountability and recognize what needs to be changed within you and making excuses for it, um, you're hiding yourself. You're not taking that accountability. You know, and that's what she means when you recognize it. Mm -hmm. When you recognize something, you need to say, you know what, this is something that I know I have a problem with. And when people come and they say something about it, you know, instead of having this wall up, oh, you can't judge me, or you can't tell me, you know, look at your life, let me tell you something, God is the judge, okay? And realize that if someone tells you something in love and you're just offended about it, think about this, is God speaking to you through them? And you're telling God, you can't judge me. Because if I told a thief, thou should not steal, and they say to me that I can't tell them what to do. I can't judge them. It is not I that judge you. It is I that deliver the law of judgment because God is the one said thou should not steal. I'm just a vessel delivering the message. So when people are telling you something because God speaks to people, he'll show you through a video. He'll show you in a newspaper. He'll and do we have newspapers these days anyway, but he will get his message across is my point. And when it comes, realize there's a difference between correction and condemning. There's a difference between someone judging you and correction. It is time to take correction in your life if you want to be free. If you want to be free from being bound with the worldly things in this life, you're going to have to be obedient and come into the inner sanctuary of your spiritual relationship with God and put him first. All right? Well, I just want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank my beautiful sister for rocking with Zaya. And I love you guys. And you know we have some very exciting things coming up. You heard my sister Chiquita. She told you about all the wonderful things. Make sure you tune in for Karen White, uh, a beautiful singer. You heard beautiful songs. We're looking forward to talking to her and Derek Muhammad. They are doing a great movie together, and I can't wait to hear what's going on with them. Um, definitely stay tuned for that. On um, Thursday, we're going to have mashed potatoes and those single, those relationships. You don't want to miss it. Who's in your bed? You want to know who's in your bed. Let me tell you, that's going to be juicy. Anyway, and I hope to see you there. And next Sunday, same time, same place, 2 p.m., rocking with Zion. Because you know what? It's only one way to rock, and that's with Yeshia Christ. Thank you for joining, and see I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Thanks.